But today we're talking about COVID. And I'm sorry, it's the topic that just never ends. I mean, how long has it been now? I've lost track. And some of us may feel like we're over it. But the thing is, it hasn't gone away. Just last week, more than 16,000 people caught COVID. That's 16,000 new cases. And that's just the folks who are still testing. And nearly 300 reported deaths. So those numbers aren't small. And now there's another new variant spreading around the world. So we need to talk about it. We're dealing with a new variant. Some are dubbing Kraken. Several provinces have already confirmed cases of the so-called Kraken subvariant. And prevention scientists have named this subvariant Kraken. The name references a mythical sea monster. It's memorable, I guess, but it's actually called XBB 1.5, which can be memorable too. It's XBB 1.5. Another brand of COVID-19 has arrived. It's a new strain, but it isn't the same. Sounds more like Elon Musk, his name. <laughs> well, XBB 1.5 is this variant's scientific name. And that's the name we're going to be using today. It's been found in 29 countries, including here in Canada. And there are some signs that it could become the dominant strain of the coronavirus. The CDC says it's already making up more than a quarter of new cases in the U.S. So what do we need to know about XBB 1.5? And I swear, every time I say that now, I'm going to be thinking of that Jimmy Fallon song. But what do these letters and numbers even mean? What do we know about how this variant behaves? We'll get to that in just a second. But first, let's talk about mutation. OK, so believe it or not, that is the kind of mutation we're talking about here, genetic mutation. It's the same for the coronavirus as it is for the X-Men, just on a much smaller, much less dramatic scale. So. This is a coronavirus. And I know I'm sick of seeing it too. We've seen it everywhere. But remember, it keeps changing. And that's exactly why we need to keep talking about it. So in this case, changes happen when the virus invades your body's cells, using them to make copies of itself. It's a bit like it's taking over a factory and using it to produce its own evil twin. But in that process of the virus copying itself, you get these random mutations, kind of like copying errors. Now, because they're random, some mutations don't actually change all that much. And believe it or not, some mutations actually make the virus weaker or less effective at making you sick, giving your body an advantage. And if they're weaker, they may not live long enough to reproduce that much, but the viruses that do live longer are the ones whose mutations make the virus stronger. And those are the ones that doctors and scientists keep a close eye on. Ones like this. For example, these are the virus's spike protein. It's what the virus uses to grab onto and get into your cells, almost like the keys to a door. Mutations like this can make the virus more transmissible. Other mutations might cause more severe illness or let the virus escape current treatments or vaccines. You get the idea. Now, we've already seen a few major variants since the pandemic started. Delta was one, and Omicron is the most recent one raising alarm. Check this out. This tree shows the different branches from the original virus, alpha, that caused COVID. Those red dots are the Omicron line. And right there at the tail end of it, XBB 1.5. XBB 1.5, another brand of COVID-19 has arrived. So the World Health Organization says there are currently about 540 variants of the virus from the Omicron line alone. And the number of distinct viral genome sequences scientists have to track from the get-go was in the tens of thousands. Basically a rate so unprecedented, they didn't really have a way of naming all those variants. 
So scientists came up with Pango, which is short for pangolin. That's that anteater creature that looks like this. And truth be told, the name's a bit of a nod to the debate about how COVID may have spread to humans. So when scientists started using this, you had two major strains of COVID, A and B. Pretty straightforward, right? And each significant mutation gets marked with a number. So when B mutated, it became B.1, B.2, and so on. When B.1 mutated, it became B.1.1, B.1.2. You get the picture. But when scientists reach B.1.1, 0.1.1, four branches of variation, it becomes a whole new letter. So it becomes a C. After you cycle through the entire alphabet, you start doubling up. That means you get AA, AB, AC, all the way through AZ. And then you triple the letters, triple A, and so on. XBB 1.5 is, well, it took a lot of mutations to get there. But how worried should we be about it? We've got Lauren Pelly here with us. She is a senior health and medical reporter with CBC News. Hi, Lauren. Hello. So tell us, what do we know so far? About XBB 1.5. Yeah. Well, um, it's Omicron. It's part of that Omicron family that hit a year ago and really changed the course of the pandemic. Right. Remember, you know, it was last January, we had this explosive surge in cases, sort of felt like everyone yeah. was catching it. Since then, that family of subvariants kept evolving and it led to where we are now. XBB 1.5 is one of the subvariants sort of duking it out for dominance. Uh, it's more similar than different to all the Omicron subvariants that came before. They're all highly contagious. That's really, really what sets it apart. Um, and they keep evolving in that direction. So what we've seen with XBB 1.5 that's sort of interesting, it's the product of something called recombination. 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 Okay. So it, interesting, sort of alarming it sounding It sounds a term. little complicated, I'm not going to lie. Totally. But it's just, it's just part of how viruses evolve. So in some cases, uh, sometimes someone can be infected with multiple variants, um, and there could be sort of a mashup that occurs. Uh, but let's let a virologist explain that. I spoke to Angela Rasmussen um, out uh, in Saskatoon, and she explained it this way. Let's take a listen. Okay. So normally, um, when a virus makes a copy of itself, which is what viruses do when they replicate, it makes mistakes. And those mistakes don't get corrected, and they're called mutations. Um, so that's the normal way that, that viruses and actually people also evolve. Um, however, there's a way to speed that up, and that's a different kind of mistake, essentially, that can happen when two viruses are infecting the same host at the same time, and that's called recombination. That's essentially cut and pasting those two virus genomes together. Okay, so rapid fire. Let's talk about how this subvariant operates. Mm -hmm. So XBB 1.5, um, you know, basically it's trying to infect as many people as it can. Right. So these sort of, uh, you know, how it evolves, it wants to evade our immune system's defenses. It wants to be able to infect as many people as possible. Like that's how right. it spreads. Right. So will this dominate all the other variants? Maybe. I mean, I don't have a crystal ball to know that for sure, but it's really been spiking up in the U.S. Not quite as much as early predictions, uh, but it certainly has been rising in those numbers, which sort of fueled some fears earlier this year that this could be another big one to watch. We'll have to see how that actually pans out, though. Yeah, well, it does seem like a lot of people have COVID right now. Mm -hmm. Just anecdotally, everyone seems to be getting sick. Yeah, I mean, ever since Omicron hit, we've really, we haven't seen a complete lull. There have mm -hmm. sort of been these rolling waves of infections. And as alarming as that is, and it is alarming, we have another new virus that we have to contend with alongside everything else that circulates right. in the winter and the rest of the year as well. Uh, but on the flip side, the World Health Organization has been very clear that what they're seeing is kind of what they expected in terms of the SARS-CoV-2 virus evolving. Here's what uh, Dr. Maria Van Kerkhove said to our Rosemary Barton the other day. All of these sublineages that we detect, the next one will be more contagious than the next. That's what viruses do. They have to outcompete each other right. because there are so many different sublineages that are in circulation. They have to be able to replace the other ones that are out there. So you'll hear us say that more and more as we go forward. Um, but it isn't substantially more, for example. But again, you know, this Omicron is incredibly transmissible. Okay, incredibly transmissible. So if you've already had it, can you catch it again? I would bet on that at this point. And there's two reasons why. 
So number one, this whole family of subvariants, XBB 1.5 included, they're really contagious. Yes, you can catch them again. There's been lots of signals that they're capable of evading your immune system. So they're able to sneak through and right. infect you. Two, uh, for those who are vaccinated, uh, that protection can wane with time. So you're still able to fend off serious illness, but less able to prevent yourself from being infected in the first place. So we have those two things in tandem where you have a very contagious variant and you have vaccines that wane. So get a booster shot if you haven't already, because there's still no time like the present to get that little extra boost of protection. Right, right. So then what should we be watching for next? What all the scientists around the world are watching for is how this virus will keep evolving. Yes, they're looking at all these Omicron subvariants, but they're also watching for a curveball. So if we see this virus evolving in a way that's suddenly more severe or renders our vaccines, you know, more useless against it, that would be concerning. And that's what the World Health Organization might call PI. So they've been using this alphabet, Greek alphabet naming convention. We had Omicron was the last big one. The next one would be PI. So if we get hit with that, uh, I hope we don't, knock on wood. <laughs> uh, but if we do, then we're going to have a big problem on our hands. And that could be the next thing that would be considered a game changer in this pandemic. Oh, we'll be watching for that. Lauren Pelly, thank you so much. No problem.